Today we're going to be taking a quick look at this Asus gaming laptop we recently got in the shop. This is the Asus ROG Zephyrus S17 and this one is within the series GX 703H and I'll show you the full model when we get to the bottom casing there if you're interested for the full spec but we're going to be walking through this laptop together for the first time I haven't really spent a lot of time on this particular unit myself so we'll be looking at all the ports the different features of the laptop and so with that let me start by going over the specifications on this particular configuration and so let's open up some of the windows here so we can see First of all, we've got a very nice, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see that better, a very nice three terabyte solid state drive on this guy. And so that's really nice that they bundle that in onto this particular unit. But let's take a look at the processor, graphics, and all that good stuff here. Let's get a couple of windows open so we can see all that. All right, so first of all, we've got the processor. This one comes with the Core i9 11th gen. It's the 11900H there, clocking in at 2.5 gigahertz. And this one has a whopping 32 gigs of RAM. That's pretty decent for a laptop like this. Of course, it is 64-bit. Windows 11 Pro came on this particular unit there. And then let's hop over to the device manager here and take a look at some of the other components. So you can see this one has that SSD. I guess it's actually a RAID, so it might be a couple drives bundled together. I'm actually curious about that if it's two SSDs. So it looks like it's a triple, I'm reading off the box here, a triple one terabyte PCIe setup. So it's actually three one terabyte SSDs that are combined together to make that one single three terabyte. So that's pretty neat. Gives you a lot of bandwidth then on the read write times, having the three separate drives combined like that. For the graphics, we've got the GeForce RTX 3080. And for those interested on the VRAM, let's check that out together. We'll go through Task Manager Performance and graphics there we are we can see this one's got 16 gigs of dedicated graphics memory so that's that's pretty good that's something to get excited about and write home about and you can see here the performance on the ssd we got the memory just showing that if you're curious there and of course you've got the the bundled kind of integrated intel uhd graphics all right so that's what we've got there i'll open up a couple other of these expand them in case you're curious it looks like it's got the mediatek wi-fi 6 of course a gigabit ethernet adapter there and bluetooth and then we've got our processor all expanded there so yeah really decent specs for this laptop i mean i think i'm most impressed initially by the graphics memory on the rtx 3080 having that 16 gigs of dedicated VRAM, but then also the neat uh, three terabyte storage with the three individual one terabyte SSDs put together there. So that's pretty neat. And then for those interested in the native screen resolution, we'll hop over there to display settings. And this one is 3840 by 2160. And I believe this is a 15.6 inch. Let me double check here. Oh, nope, it's actually gonna be a 17. So 17.3 uh, inch probably on the screen there. So that's pretty decent. So those are the basic specs on the unit. Let's take a look at the different ports, give you a close up looks of all the different angles there. So kind of push it far back so you get the full picture here and kind of see how it's laid out. So it is a 17.3 inch laptop. You've got a really nice size, large trackpad up front here. I think this is probably about the same size as one you'd find on a, one of the newer MacBook Pro models there, kind of using that as a benchmark. So real nice size there. It is centered up on the space bar here on the main keyboard because it does have a numeric keypad off to the right here. And so that is kind of unique. And so it does have it offset a little bit on this side. And so if your palms are resting here, you're gonna have a little bit more space here and you're not gonna be quite centered up on the screen. So just something to consider there. You can see that the keyboard is backlit and it just went off. Let's see if I tap a key, there you go. You can see it kind of what it looks like there. So it does have different colors spanning across the keyboard. 
I'm not sure. Most of these are often configurable. Yeah, you can see it's kind of like a, a wave effect or rainbows that's going across. So I would imagine you can configure this if you don't like that and you just want all the keys to be one color. You can probably change that in the settings there. You do have a couple different hotkeys that they've located up at the top on your, F on your F keys up there. And then you also have this dial here, which appears to control your screen. Well, volume perhaps, I was gonna say screen brightness, but it appears to be the volume. You can see up here as I rotate that up and down. So that's kind of interesting. So I wonder if you can program that for different things. It's got a click on it as well. And the click, I just, I guess it toggles what you're doing there here. So that's kind of interesting. So yeah, let us know in the comments below if you own this model or what you might use this dial for. If you change it to something else, maybe in a game, that's kind of a nice, it's got nice feedback when you rotate it there. So kind of a nice little dial up at the top there. Otherwise pretty standard keys. Nothing extra special on that front, pretty standard for an Asus laptop. The material here on the palm rest area, it is a some kind of plastic that's a, a little bit softer. And so, you know, a lot of times with these, they're balancing form versus function, you know, how it feels on your palms and your, your hands as you're resting it versus how does it hold up to uh, the oils on your on your skin, right? And you can see I have I just wiped this this thing off before doing the video, but I couldn't quite get all of this off. And so this is just from the previous customer. This is a used laptop. And so, I mean, that's bound to happen. So that is something with this material that they've used on the palm rest area. It is gonna be a little bit harder to keep clean. You know, maybe I could have taken some alcohol wipes and tried to get that up more, but uh, you know, I rub pretty hard and you can still see some, some imprints there. So just something to consider. But I will say it is very comfortable when I'm resting my palms on here. It feels very comfortable and uh, it's not too harsh, not too hard there. Of course, you've got your stickers for the graphics card and the processor. And then let's touch real briefly on something that's kind of unique to this particular unit, and that is with this keyboard. And I apologize that the focus is not quite locking on properly. I think I'm too close to the camera. So let me see if I can back up a little bit. There we go. So you can kind of see that keyboard a little bit better, but notice how it, it raises up here and kind of elevates that keyboard. And so as I open and close the lid, you're gonna notice that that keyboard goes back down there. So that's kind of interesting. So I guess they're trying to get that keyboard elevated for, I guess, gaming for ergonomics. I'm not really sure. I've never really been bothered by laptops having a flat keyboard personally, but this one you can see does have that design where it's gonna go up and down as you open and close the lid there. So that is kind of interesting. Let us know what you think in the comments if that's a feature that you would specifically buy this model for, just the fact that it has that keyboard that raises and lowers, or maybe you are of the opinion that this is a must have feature. Let us know what you think in the comments below there. Otherwise on the side casing, we've got two high speed USB ports over here to the left. We do have, it looks like a micro SD, or I'm sorry, an SD card slot. You certainly could put micro SD with an adapter in there. And then you've got some nice ventilation here off to the side there. You can see the fins in there for the heating and cooling to keep everything nice and cool there. Let's hop around to the, the lid and then we'll jump back to the to the other side there. So you can see the lid is pretty typical Asus. You know, they've got the little pinholes in the nice geogra uh, geometric uh, arrangement there where you can see everything and everything looks really nice the way it's lined up there. Then you've got a little bit of the logo here off to the side. And uh, by the way, on these little pinholes, some of the Asus ones, you see kind of a holographic uh, rainbow embedded underneath the dots. This one, however, I think it's just plain. I don't see anything going down. Uh, but it still does have some visual interest the way they've done the different, the matte versus the glossy. And I do like they, that they did mostly matte with just a little bit of gloss there on the lid. I'll give you a close up of what those pinholes look like there. All right, then on the back, we've got some more cooling on the back edge here. Asus seems to do a pretty good job with their cooling on most of their units, leaving lots of ventilation. So no surprise there. And I'll give you a, a quick look at this side here. Again, notice how that keyboard goes up and down as we open and close the lid there. And then more ventilation on this side. It looks like there's a little silica 
bit stuck in the vent here, so we'll have to pull that out. But over here we've got our power port to charge the laptop, HDMI, Ethernet, and then we've got another, looks like high-speed USB here, and then two USB-Cs. It looks like they're marked differently, so it looks like this one can charge and provide ample power. This one looks like it might just be a high speed, but also support for uh, display, uh, for mini display there as well. And then it's got, looks like a tri-port audio jack on the side there. Now for those interested on the charger, what that looks like, got that over here off to the side, and I'll just pull that out. So you can see it's a pretty big brick. This one is, it looks like a 280 watts. So no surprise there between the graphics card and, and how you know much power it needs. This needs a very powerful charger. It's got a pretty standard tip on the end, so I like that. You know, nothing proprietary. If you ever needed to do like a universal charger, wouldn't be too hard if you had to do that. So that's kind of nice. Then off to the front, I realized I missed these little slots. It's got two slots on either side. I'm gonna assume those are probably for the speakers. And then let's flip it over to the bottom side. Let me rotate it for you so you can see it better. You get a little bit better idea of what the ventilation looks like. So again, Asus does a really good job with this. You can see some ventilation here on either side with the fans behind there. Some more little ventilation along this edge. You can see the profile. It is a little bit thicker on the space under the keyboard. And then it kind of tapers back right here and gets thinner. So that's kind of an interesting design cue. I didn't notice that before, but then it does have a nice kind of uh, rubber palm or rubber rest rather foot down at the bottom here for it to, to sit on there. So there's a look at that profile. Then we've got more slots here on the bottom. I'm going to guess again, these are probably for speakers, maybe for the base side of the, the speakers down there. Could be for a little bit of ventilation too. And then it's got the Republic of Gamers kind of in a shinier font there. As far as taking it apart, it looks like it wouldn't be too hard. You just got screws all the way around the perimeter here, one in the middle. So it shouldn't be too hard if you ever had to do some service or you wanted to upgrade it. And then for those curious on the specific model, if you wanna freeze it, you can see it right there. This again is the GX703HS. And this configuration is the XB99. So if you want this exact configuration, that is the model that you wanna Google online or be searching for. But I believe we covered just about everything on this particular unit here. Definitely let us know what you think in the comments. You know, with this laptop, I really think the big selling points are the graphics card being the 3080 with the 16 gigs of RAM and then having the uh, three one terabyte SSDs combined together. I mean, that's not something you see every day on a gaming laptop like this. And so lots of performance there. But let us know in the comments three things that you like and three things that you dislike about this unit. And I'll just share mine candidly, the ones that, that I'm thinking of right off the bat. So first one, like I've mentioned several times already, the, the specs between the graphics, the 3080 with the 16 gigs of RAM, the three terabyte SSD, and of course the 11th gen Core i9. I mean, sure there's 12th gen out now, but 11th gen is still pretty fast. So I think the specs are definitely something to boast about. Then I also like the screen on this one. I didn't really talk about that before, but it is very nice and bright. You know, some of these screens that we get on gaming laptops, they just seem dim and, the, and they don't seem very vibrant and uh, not fun to look at. This really looks like it would present not only just your, your Windows dialogues well, but especially the gaming and when you're doing things like that, that you want every, everything to pop and, and stand out. So I like that as well. And then uh, my third like I'm gonna say on it is just the overall design on Asus laptops. They seem to do a pretty good job of balancing, making something look nice in the end, but not going over the top or doing something too radical, but giving enough interest uh, visually on the, on the casing. Uh, dislikes, you know, I'm not sure I really care for the keyboard being raised there. I guess, you know, my thoughts are when I look at it, it's only raising it here. Let's see if we got my ruler. It looks like only about a half inch, yeah. It's only about a half inch that it's actually raising the keyboard from where it would be if it wasn't. So is that enough to make a difference? Again, I don't really know. I've never been bothered by a keyboard that's just been flat. So again, chime in in the comments if you've got an opinion on that or you 
have used these for longer periods and noticed the benefits, let us know. But I guess, is that one more thing to go wrong, you know, in the end where it's opening and closing the ribbon cable underneath wear and tear, perhaps maybe it is one more thing to have to worry about. Uh, other dislikes, I've got to say the casing material, you know, I don't like uh, laptops and stuff to show oil uh, the way this one does. And I think this one is going to wear a little bit more on the palm rest area. Sure, it's nice to touch and feel. It feels nice and soft. But I think the downside of that is it naturally is going to absorb more things. You're going to have to keep it cleaner to keep it from doing that. So that's another dislike. And then last dislike, I think personally... I don't regularly use a 17 inch laptop with a number keypad off the side, but I think I would be bothered a little bit by having the trackpad not centered up on the palm rest area here because you're constantly going to be working over here and yet your center of the screen is over here. And so you're just kind of off center. I feel like it would mess with me after a while and I would want this trackpad to be centered up. I get why they did it. I mean, they kind of centered it up. Well, they sort of actually put it a little bit off center. You can see with the uh, space bar right there and the alt key. But I think I would have personally preferred this trackpad to be centered up maybe directly, I guess, a little bit over. I mean, true, you're going to be, if you're typing, you're going to be going back and forth. So maybe it's not as big of a deal as I think. But just something to consider with the trackpad there off site. So those are my three likes, three dislikes. Let us know what you think in the comments below. But I hope this information has been helpful. For those interested in pricing, we are probably going to price this guy in the just north of $2,000, more than likely, probably around two point three dollars or so. Um, as a used unit. I think originally this probably priced out just north of 3000 So it's a pretty good value if you're looking for something used that's not too used but still has some, some decent current specs. So again, I hope this video is helpful. For those who don't know, JBrokers is a risk-free secondhand marketplace. We buy and sell all sorts of gadgets, electronics, everything from guitars and cameras and collectibles to things like this gaming laptop. So if you're in the market for something like this or you want to upgrade and you don't want to sell your laptop on your own or your iPhone or whatever you've got, definitely check us out. The two things that our customers love about J Brokers most are, first off, we always pay the agreed upon amount for the agreed upon item. And so you never have to worry about those bait and switch gimmicks that some of the other folks play. And then secondly, we always, always pay our customers on the next business day after we receive your item. Rain or shine, doesn't matter what's going on in the world. So definitely check us out at jbrokers.com. That's J-A-Y brokers.com. You can get an instant offer, no obligation on over 3,000 common products in our database. The rest of the items like this custom gaming laptop here, you can submit a personalized offer request. You'll get a response back usually within a day. Well, folks, thanks for watching. Again, let us know what you think in the comments below.